Now, we have developed a device for doing exactly what we were doing in the laboratory where we had a, a subject being hooked up and, and monitored. Do we have some lights here, please? Uh, and having the technician determine when the person was in REM sleep and then uh, turn on the flashing lights. But we thought, well, if all you need to do is to know when a person is in REM sleep and then turn on the flashing lights, this is something that should be possible to do with a home device. So here is a device we call a dream light. And the dream light has uh, sensors in this mask. And you wear the mask like this. And then when the sensors pick up rapid eye movements, sees your eyes moving, says rapid eye movements, you must be dreaming. And so it then causes the lights to flash. And in exactly the same way as we've just seen in the laboratory experiments, then you become lucid. No. Now the idea of this, again, distinguish from the light and sound machine in which you may have the lights go on for a half an hour or more because you're attempting to induce a state, a, dri a driving state in some way with that. In this case, it's a cue. It's simply a reminder. A single flash would do it. A flash. Oh, I'm dreaming. Now, depending on uh, for, uh, people who are deeper sleepers will want to have the flash go on for maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, but that's typically the maximum because the longer it's going on while you're dreaming, the more likely you habituate to it and you stop seeing it. So you want to, here's a change and something happens. And that's why we've picked two per second as that is the, the clearest difference on, off, on, off. I'll, I'll have time for questions in a moment. Let, let me finish this, please. So uh, we're going to have the lights off on this part, please. Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, here, this shows the output of the dream light where we're detecting uh, here are three different stages of sleep, wakefulness, non-REM sleep, and REM sleep. And these mark the REM periods, and here you're seeing the output. And you can see that the dream light actually does a pretty good job of detecting REM and then flashing the lights. Now, how well does it work? Uh, we have some sense, we've gotten back questionnaires from, we've sold something like 600 of these units. Uh, they, the subjects, uh, we gave every person that we sold it to a questionnaire asking them to turn it in you know, with your guarantee. So uh, we found then only, of course, about 10% came back, 15%. Uh, and this is what people reported having experience in the first week. So this is only covered the first week. We wanted just to see whether people were carrying out the practice correctly. There's a, a course that goes with it, and there's a set of procedures that you're supposed, supposed to follow in order to get effective results. It takes a mental preparation, you know, just put the thing on and, and have a lucid dream. You put it on with a certain frame of mind. I'm, I'm going to recognize this flashing light in that sort of sense. So we have that. Um, 39% of the subjects had a lucid dream in that first week. Now, these people uh, were people that, on the average, would have a lucid dream otherwise less than once a month. Somewhere uh, the typical was uh, two or three, four per year. So they're having more lucid dreams than they would normally have. But here, I think, is the most important point, is that three quarters of them had a dreamlike cue incorporation they reported saying, the lights flashed in my dream. Now, that doesn't mean they recognize what it meant. This is the idea is you wear the mask, OK, and the lights flash in your dream. You wake up and say, those are lights flashing in my dream. Oh, I was supposed to remember that. And if your mind is not prepared when you go to sleep to recognize that, then the, you get all the hints you want to say, Psst, a hint, a word to the wise people. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't do any good, right? So if you do, oh, oh, yeah, I got it, is all it takes. So, and then we had basically a third in the first week of, of those people that had cues realized from the cue that it was a dream. Another, uh, about 10% of them had a dream, a lucid dream from one of the particular features of the dream light. And that is we have a reality checker built into it. As you wear this device, and sometimes it wakes you up. 
a lot of lights flash because it's a delicate balance between finding a level that appears in your dream and the level that's too bright and wakes you up. So it does wake you up from time to time. So then you start building up the expectation that the thing is going to wake you up. And the lights flashes, oh, and then you find yourself in bed awake. So I'm awake. Well, we have it set up so that if you pr press a button on the mask here, like this, you see a flash of light. And that flash of light also delays the dream light and says, wait for 10 minutes each time I push that button before flashing again. So as you're falling asleep, you may show rapid eye movements, but it won't flash at that point. It gives you time. But so now here you are. You just push this button, and you don't see any flash of light. So what's going on? And what's going on is you're dreaming that you're awake. You see, is that you just had a false awakening due to the dream light. And so this is something that we find that people actually can learn to do much better than the, our first week users. To give a sense, in, in people that practice over a period of time, and this represents uh, some uh, 993 nights, uh, these were Lynn Levitan's results, where she tested many, uh, this is the latest version of the Dreamlight, but we went through many series of devices over the past uh, six years. And uh, she used them all, and over that period of time, uh, these were the rate of lucid dreaming per night on the nights in which she was using the dream light in whatever uh, mode and when she wasn't. And so when she wasn't, she was having a lucid dream in about 15% uh, of the cases on the average. So that is to say, in every, w once a week or something like that, when she's using the dream light over there, she's up to about every other night. So half the time she used it over that period of time, she had a lucid dream. But don't forget that included many devices that we weren't even sure were working at that time. So one of the advantages of the current Dreamlight is it stores all night records in its memory. It's a sophisticated little computer. And we know what it's doing. And we can find out how many times did the lights flash last night? Did you see it or not? If it didn't flash enough, you can adjust it to flash more. If it flashed plenty of times you didn't see it, it's probably not bright enough. You turn up the brightness and so on. So it's a tool that you use. Uh, you have to understand what it can do and how it works, but then it's something that you can use to have lucid dreams very effectively. Now, some people uh, in the scientific community have said, well, you know, how do, how do we know that this isn't all just a placebo effect of some kind? You know, flashing lights, you know, people think it's going to do some lucid dreams, and so it does. So we did an experiment uh, to establish that there was something more to it. Anyone that has either experienced a lucid dream induced that way or has read enough reports of what is said in them will realize they can't just be a placebo effect. Because people say things like, and then suddenly the entire sphere is just flashing with lights. And I realize, oh, no, I'm about to wake up. It's a dream light. And then it stops, and they're still there. And they know they're dreaming. And obviously, that's got something to do with the flashing lights. But what we did is we programmed the dream light in two special modes. One was called A, and one was called B. And we asked subjects, after they had adjusted their dream lights to a level of suitable sensitivity for them, to uh, alternate nights in the A test mode and the B test mode, and told them nothing else. And we had these A and B test modes programmed so that when they tested the brightness of the light and so on while awake, they looked exactly the same, so the same mode as far as they could tell. All right. But in fact, we had uh, one of the two modes was flashes off, so that it didn't actually flash during the night in spite of the fact that it indicated it gave 12 cues and so on. But there weren't any lights flashing. And then we uh, looked at people's reports where they used about 10 nights, so five and five. And uh, then measured the num number of times that they reported incorporations of flashes in their dreams. And uh, nights with flashes off, it's b basically an average of one per night and with fla or with flashes on. So the lights are flashing, and about once a night, people report seeing in the dreams. With flashes off, they report about 7% uh, of the cases, something that they interpreted as a dream-like cue. And you see, if you're thinking about this kind of thing, 
any distinct light source might make you think, oh, that might be the dream light. Now, that, of course, is good. It doesn't matter that it's not the dream light because it becomes a cue for you to recognize that you're dreaming better. So, but that's sort of the false positive rate there. And so we've got about 15 times higher rate of incorporation on nights when there ought to be than when there's not. Likewise, uh, the cued lucid dream reports uh, are eight times higher on nights in which the flashes are off or uh, flashes are on are eight times higher. And the total number of reports are of lucid dream are three times higher on those nights. Now, the part of the total lucid dreams in this case comes from we encourage this group of subjects very strongly to push that reality checker button every time they woke up. And we found when we did that, that half of those subjects had a, a reality test or a lucid dream during that 10 days. So it's something that you can get in the habit, and it works very well if you do that. Pardon me? Uh, well, here we have them here, actually. So. Uh, now, this, re this represents another fact that's important about this, and that is that it's not just the using, having the lights on or not. It's also the mental preparation that goes in it. So here we have the, what we're calling the dream light placebo alone, no cues, no mental preparation other than I'm wearing the dream light and I'm having lucid dreams. And we've got something like an 8% result here. Now, with the dream light placebo plus a mental preparation, then we have an increase over that. These are small sample sizes. We've only got, uh, I think, about 10, 14 subjects in it. Um, dream light cues only is similar to the mental preparation only. But if we then have dream light cues plus mental preparation, then we have clearly uh, well, a significant increase uh, actually in these two levels and marginally there. But this is consistent with other studies that we've done that shows quite clearly that, that using external devices without mental preparation is not very effective. But if you have mental preparation plus an external aid of some kind, then the two have a synergistic effect and people can have very effective results. These are average results, but you find some people, for example, learn how to have lucid dreams to dream light and succeed most of the time that they use it. So there's a, there's a wide variation, and, and some people will uh, report, for example, after using the dream light that they just bought that uh, they didn't get any results that in the first week, but they kept at it, working with it, seeing what happened, studying it, and then by a month had learned to have lucid dreams every time they used it. And so it's a, definitely a learning that takes place. It's not something that happens automatically. Kinetic systems. I'd like to welcome you to the Near Technology Forum, and thank you all for being here.